Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, the topic of this lecture is forms of poetry. We have different forms of poetry right from the beginning of uh, humankind to the present day in various languages. In English, we are familiar with different forms like this, ballad, dream poetry, sonnet, hymn, ode, epic, mock epic, verse epistle, elegy, song, lyrical ballad, pastoral, dramatic monologue, blank verse free verse, verse paragraph, stanza forms. As you can see, some kind of historical development you can see in various forms of poetry. Let us begin with ballad. <coughs> Ballads are traditionally narrative uh, poems. They are actually songs, actually folk songs. They tell uh, popular stories and usually they are tragic there is a kind of drama and no subjectivity is there, all objectively is told. These poems have four lines in each of the stanzas, that is why they are called quatrains. Some variations will be there in stress and rhyme. Usually they appear in dialogue form with also some kind of supernatural element. One of the famous ballads in English is the demon lover. It has many versions. This version has one stanza and here we have this example. Where have you been my long lost lover, this seven long years and more? I have been seeking gold for thee, my love and riches of great store. So, the dialogue continues between the lover and the uh, beloved. It goes on like this at, at the end, it ends tragically. Next we have dream poetry. This dream poetry is all about having a dream, visions, reveries and then the narrator telling the story. This form of poetry was very popular in the middle ages. The narrator falls asleep and dreams the events of the tale and then starts telling the tale. This is actually a frame for which another tale or many other tales may be told. We have some well known examples. One is Chaucer's The Book of the Touches, another is Coleridge's Kubla Khan. In this poem, we have a contrast between dream and reality. The next form we deal with is sonnet. It is a very famous poetic form. It was introduced to England by Thomas Wyatt and the Earl of Surrey. We have two kinds of sonnets. One is called the Italian or Petrarchan sonnet. This Petrarchan sonnet has two divisions. One is called octave with eight lines, another is called sestet with six lines. The rhyme scheme usually goes, the rhyme scheme goes like this A B B A, A B B A, C D E, C D or C D C, D C D, and it may have many other variations. There is a transition from the octave to the sestet and it is indicated by what is known as volta. It means a change of thought or a turn of thought. And we have a number of good practitioners of this form, two of them are Milton and Wordsworth. We have another kind of sonnet that is called the English or Shakespearean sonnet. This particular form has three quatrains, that means four lines each and a couplet at the end that is two lines. So, the rhyme scheme goes like this A B A B C D C D E F E F G G and here there is no volta, the whole idea is developed till the end finally, a summary is given. Now, let us deal with the form ode. An ode is an elaborate and elevated lyric poem, it is a long ceremonious address to a person or a thing or an abstract idea. It is serious in subject 
language and tone. Here we have two kinds of words, one is called Pindaric word based on this Pindar writer, poet, another is called Horatian word from derived from Horace, another writer, poet. The Pindaric word is a public praise and it has a three part structure. And again within this Pindaric word we have two forms, perfect word and irregular word. For the perfect Pindaric word we have the example of Thomas Grace, the progress of poesy and for the irregular word we have the example in William Collins's Ode to Evening. The Horatian word is all about private reflection, meditation, thought and it has a free structure. A good example we have in English literature is Keats Ode on a Grecian Urn. Now we come to the epic form, it is a long narrative poem about the great deeds of a legendary hero in a grand style. It deals with gods and goddesses, heroes, gods may support some and may oppose some others, all kinds of superhuman adventures in battles and voyages we have in epics. It ultimately deals with something to do with saving or protecting or establishing a nation. We have two kinds of epic, one is called primary or oral epics. In this group we have well known epics like the Iliad, Beowulf, Gilgamesh and in the second kind we have literary epics. Well known examples include Virgil's Aeneid and Milton's Paradise Lost. Then we come to another form mock epic. We have epic and mock epic, you can understand it is a mocking of the epic, it is a ridiculing of the epic. It uses the epic form but for a different reason for a satirical purpose. So it is an imitation of the epic form for a satirical purpose. This form applies the lofty style and conventions of epic to trivial or petty subjects. Sometimes it ridicules or mocks at the epic conventions too. The mock epic like the epic has books and cantos, invocations, battles, supernatural missionary, epic simile, epithets, it may begin in media res and so many other conventions. One variety of mock epic is called mock heroic poem. This was very popular in the 18th century. This is not long enough but not divided into books and uh, cantos. One example we have is Dryden's Macflecno. Now let us move on to another form of poetry called verse epistle. Epistle is a letter, a verse epistle is a letter in the form of a poem to a friend or to a patron in a conversational style. It usually deals with moral, philosophical and literary themes. We have classical models for this verse epistle form. Horace has written a number of epistles. A favorite form of the 18th century poets is this verse epistle. One of the good examples that we have is Alexander Pope's an epistle to Dr. Herbert Nutt. In 20th century also we have an epic, yeah, we have a verse epistle in W. H. Auden's New Year letter. Another classical model for this verse epistle is Ovid's epistles. Let us examine this elegy. It is a serious art form in literature. There are many well known elegies in English literature. It was originally a formal lyric poem in the elegiac meter. It included various subjects like love, war, politics and lamentations for the dead. But gradually in course of time it came to be confined to a mournful song for a friend or a public figure after the renaissance. It is chiefly concerned with the question of living in a meaningless world due to the fact of death. It is a melancholic 
and reflective poem on the ephemeral life and its sorrows. The most famous elegy that we have in English is Thomas Gray's elegy written in a country churchyard. A closely related form is pastoral elegy, elegy in the setting of a pastoral environment in a rural environment. It is a melancholic and reflective poem, it, it, is, it deals with sad thoughts and ideas. It is also a lamentation for the dead in an elaborate style. The pastoral conventions of shepherds, plain language, rural life and nature, they are brought into this uh, form. We have again a wonderful list of pastoral elegy poems. Spence's Astrophel is a pastoral elegy in honor of Sir Philip Sidney. Milton's Lycidas is a pastoral elegy for his friend Edward King. Shelley's Adonis is a memorial poem for his friend John Keats. Lord Tennyson wrote this poem in memoriam for his friend H. Hallam from whose death Tennyson was not able to relieve himself. He was grieving for a long time. Similarly, we have Matthew Arnold's poem Thirsis for his friend A. H. Clough. Poetry is all about song. Here we have a list of songs, songs about the joys and sorrows of life. We begin with Songs of Solomon. Here we have a just a small extract from this Songs of Solomon. Your temples behind your veil are like the halves of a pomegranate. Songs of Thomas White and Surrey in 16th century we have. We have a number of songs in the plays of Shakespeare and Ben Johnson. Similarly, Dan wrote quite a lot of songs. When it comes to William Blake, we have two volumes of poetry called Songs of Innocence and Songs of Experience. And recently, we have Bob Dylan, he writes all songs. They are poems for which he was awarded this Nobel Prize. We have lyrical ballad, it is a combination of lyric and ballad. Ballad is an impersonal narrative poem. On the other hand, lyric is a personal emotional poem. These are combined together in a lyrical ballad. It deals with a story. It is told emotionally by a speaker in a simple conversational style. William Wordsworth is well known poet of this form. He has a poem called We Are Seven another poem Tintin Abbey, these are included in his collection of poems called lyrical ballads. In this volume, we also have the lyrical ballad of Coleridge as well. In this context, we have a stanza from this short poem, We Are Seven. Sisters and brothers, little maid, how many may you be? How many? Seven in all, she said and wondering looked at me. Next, we move on to the dramatic monologue form, it is a well known poetic form. It is a poem in which an imaginary or mythical or historical character speaks to a silent audience and reveals his own character. It deals with emotions, but not entirely lyrical. It has a single character speaking throughout the poem, but it is not a soliloquy because it has a listener, an implied listener. It is not about the poet's own thoughts or feelings, it usually deals with somebody else. It begins at a critical moment in the speaker's life. We have two well known examples, Tennyson's poem Ulysses is a dramatic monologue, Browning's dramatic monologue is My Lost Duchess, both of them were published in 1842. We have one question, who invented this form first? Tennyson published first, Browning wrote it first, that is how critics have come to a kind of conclusion. Blank verse is not exactly a poetic form, it is used in various poetic forms actually, it is one way of using language. It was first used by Henry Howard, 
the Yala Sari in 16th century. It was used extensively by Marlowe and Shakespeare in the Renaissance period in their plays and also poems. It is considered to be a popular and flexible form of English verse. The reason is it is close to the rhythm of common speech. It is usually unrhymed and in iambic pentameter. So, a line which is unrhymed and in iambic pentameter with the tense levels and stresses is called blank, blank verse. It may have run on lines, it may have varied pauses, it is used in all kinds of poetic forms, drama, narrative and meditative poems. It gives a full impression of life's complexity. One example we have is Wordsworth's epic poem, The Prelude. Milton's epic, The Paradise Last is also in blank verse form. Another form that we have to deal with is free verse. It does not follow any form at all, that is why it is called free verse. In French, it is called vie libre. Words is a metrical composition. In contrast, free words is a non metrical composition, it does not follow any particular kind of meter or measure. It is a poem without regular line length or rhyme scheme. It is characterized by cadences, flow of lines, sounds, repetitions of words, phrases, clauses and lines. We have two kinds of free words. We may have long line poems as we have in the poetry of Blake, Whitman and Ginsberg. We may have very short lines in the poems of E. E. Cummings and A. R. Ammons. Even in the case of uh, E. E. Cummings, we have a poem called Loneliness, Loneliness. All letters are given individually in one line. We also have to know about verse paragraph when we deal with forms of poetry. This verse paragraph is a group of lines constituting a section of a poem. It is decided by some sense, not stanza form. Some common idea will go together to make a verse paragraph. It is usually found in long narrative poems and the divisions are indicated by indentation that is beginning of the next line will have some break and then continue. And the indentation will begin with a capital letter. Milton's Paradise Lost is a good example of having various verse paragraphs and line lengths will be indeterminate in some cases, unrhymed usually blank verse. In rhymed form, we may have couplets, terza rimas. We may have specified line length in some poems like sonnet, limerick and haiku. In sonnet, 14 lines are there. In limerick, 5 lines are there. In haiku, 3 lines are there. And in some cases, we have sequence of stanzas, quatrain, atova rima, 8 lines. So, where we do not have this specified uh, stanza lines like sonnet, limerick, we have verse paragraphs. Generally, poems are arranged in the form of stanzas, one line, two lines, three lines, four lines like this we have. Normally, two lines will be there and two line, two lined poems are called couplets if they are rhymed and we may also have heroic couplets as in the case of Dryden and Pope. Couplets are usually associated with poets like Chaucer and Shakespeare, other poets also may have. Three line poems also we have, they are called triplets or tercets. One good poem that we have in uh, English literature for this three line poem is Shelley's Ode to the West Wind. Four line poems we may have many. When a poem has four lines, the stanza form is called quatrain. Usually ballads are in quatrain uh, stanza form. Gray's elegy has stanzas in the form of quatrains. We also have five line stanzas, they are called quintets. 
our common well known poem the road not taken by frost is in the form of five line stanzas next we have six lined poems this is called sestet already we have seen this in sonnet form here the whole poem is in the form of sestets one example is elizabeth bishop's poem called sestina we also have seven line poems one example we have is wordsworth's resolution and independence when we move to eight line poems we may call it octave one example that we have is eights sailing to byzantium then we come to nine line poems one of the best practitioners of this nine line poem is spencer this is specifically called spencerian stanza the whole epic the fairy queen is in the form of spencerian stanzas we also have 10 line poems kids word what to grecian yarn is in the form of 10 line poems we can go beyond this they may be uncommon you these are usually common ones in this presentation what we have looked at is the different kinds of poems and the stanza forms or the verse forms in english literature we dealt with ballad dream poetry sonnet hymn ode hymn is a poem in praise of something some it, it may be god we have seen epic mock epic verse epistle we also looked at elegy song lyrical ballad pastoral elegy we spent some time on dramatic monologue we defined blank verse differentiated it from free verse we saw how poetry is arranged in the form of verse paragraphs and stanza forms hope you have learnt many things about the way in which poems are arranged in lines on pages thank you